Hey, this is Eric Kurtz, and in celebration of Pi Day, in this video, we're going to show you how you can help your students discover what Pi is all about. Now, the wonderful thing about mathematics is that it's predictable, it follows patterns, it has rules. And so instead of just telling our students what Pi is, for example, um, it's better to let them discover it themselves by looking for patterns, by uh, examining the data, analyzing that, and drawing their own conclusions. And one way you can do that is with an activity using Google Sheets. Uh, so first thing first, uh, to find this particular activity, you'll want to head over to my website at controlaltachieve.com. And if you go to controlaltachieve.com slash pi, just P-I, that'll drop you right into the blog post that goes along with this particular video. And in there, you'll find the template that you can copy to do this activity. And I've got that template up right now. Uh, now, this will be a view-only template. So when you do get there, you will need to go up to the File menu, give that a click, and go down to Make a Copy so that you can have your own copy that you can edit uh, yourself. I've already done that in another tab here, so let me pop over to my copy of this particular template. And what you're going to see on the first tab are just some directions. Now we're going to talk through these so we don't need to read through them right now, but they're all there for any reason you do need to uh, take a look at those later on. And the way this basically works is, like I said, instead of just telling your kids, hey, pi is 3.14 or pi is the uh, ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle. Instead of just telling them that, let's let them discover that. You know, because when a student discovers information, they remember it a lot more. It makes more sense and it means a lot more to them because they put the work into figuring it out. So the way this works is, if you go across the bottom, you'll see some tabs here. Next to the directions tab, there's a tab that's called data. Give that a click. And what you're gonna see here is, you're gonna have your students collect data on various circles. So what I would suggest you do is just bring in a whole bunch of circular objects. Usually I raid the kitchen and grab plates and lids and then go to the garage and grab a Frisbee and you get the idea. So you wanna have a lot of different circular objects. And then you also wanna have some tape measures, some that are you know, flexible and easy to wrap around a circle. And so what you do is you give um, all the students a different circle, hopefully different sizes, the more variety Variety, the better there because we want them to see that this applies to every circle not just a particular circle uh, and then what you're going to do is have the students measure the distance around the circle and the distance across the circle now of course make sure when they go across the circle they try to go through the center as best as they can so they're actually getting the true diameter and then what you do is you share this spreadsheet with the entire class and you can number off your students so they know which, uh, which uh, row to be in. And then the students come in and they type in whatever they measured for circumference and diameter. Now, I'd probably suggest using centimeters to the nearest tenth. That'll probably be the easiest way to do that for most circular objects they're gonna be dealing with. Now, I've already got some data I'm gonna paste in here in a moment, but before we do that, you might, this is your, your choice, you may wanna hide column D and column F because this is gonna be uh, um, the ratio and then the average of those ratios and you may not want them to see that just yet so if you're not sure how to hide a column simply uh, select that column and then you can either right click on it and choose hide column that'll work and then select column F as well give that a right click and also choose hide column excellent there we go and you can always unhide these then later that way um, you'll have a chance for the students to look for patterns before you just reveal um, what those relationships are. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna copy some data that I've got from uh, some circles, and I'm just gonna paste that in. So we'll pretend that our students have actually filled all this information in. So at this point in the uh, activity, this is the time to say, do you notice any patterns? Do you notice any relationships? Does there seem to be in all these crazy numbers here, does there seem to be any sort of connection? If you need to give them a little bit of a push, you may some, say something like, what do you guys think um, about how much bigger is it around the circle than across? You know, is it twice as big, four times as big, three times as big? What do you think, you know? And see if they will, you know, maybe bite on that and start to notice that, yeah, 
in general, it looks like the distance around, it's a, it's a little bit more than three times what it is across, no matter how big or how small the circle is. You could then say, okay, well, how do we find out exactly how much bigger it is around than across? And that can bring up a good discussion and that hopefully they'll realize we need to divide. We need to take the distance around the circumference and divide it by the, the diameter to see how much bigger it is around than across. Well, that's where column D comes in. If we go ahead and expand that back out, that's the ratio. I've divided the circumference by the diameter. Now, hopefully they're going to start to see that, yep, their thinking is making sense. Now they're seeing a lot of ratios that are a about three times more around than across. Now it's not gonna be perfect because again, their kids are gonna make mistakes, they're not gonna measure everything just perfectly and that's okay, we'll let, we'll let them know there's gonna be some margin of error here. Uh, but they're gonna start seeing that even though they've all measured these on their own and probably made some little mistakes, it's still hovering right around three-ish. We could then ask them, how could we kind of um, combine all that together to come up with a, uh, a more a representative ratio. And hopefully uh, they'll say, well, we could average them all together, which would make sense. Hopefully that would pick up uh, those errors. If somebody measured a little bigger and somebody measured a little smaller, they should start to sort of average each other out. Well, that's what column F does over here. If you expand that out, it averages those and you'll be surprised. Uh, it will be really, really, really close to the actual value of pi. You'll, you'll typically get something in the 3.1, 3.2 range there, even with students making some mistakes in their measuring. Um, so that's what you can do on this tab is to start to look for patterns and start to calculate ratios to see. Now, another tab we have at the bottom is the chart tab. So this one, if I click over on the chart tab, what it does is it creates a scatter plot based upon the data they put in there. Again, we're just trying to ask them, is this data just random or is there a pattern? Is there a relationship? And once again, they definitely should see that, that no matter how they measure their circles, they're all kind of following along this line that in general has a circumference being about three times more than the diameter. So with all that said and done, the final tab is the pi tab. At this point, you can reveal to them, hey guys, there actually is a value. What you guys have been, you know, bumping up against here, this is accurate. There actually is a value, a very specific value. The distance, or excuse me, the, the amount of times that a circle is larger around than it is across um, is actually pi, a special number. And if you go to the pi tab, it will show them that the actual value of pi is about, of course, you know, again, we're rounding off here, 3.141592, blah, blah, blah. And your average you came up with was this, and here's your difference. And so in this case, they were incredibly close to actually getting the true value of pi. Um, and by doing that, again, you're not just telling them, hey, this is what pi is, but they're getting a chance to experiment and discover it themselves and realize, wow, we were able to come really close to this value so that now if you do some problems where they have to find out, you know, the distance around a circle, if they know the distance across or vice versa, they can now use this pi value that they have discovered as a class together. Fantastic. Well, uh, again, to get to this particular um, template, head on over to the controlaltachieve.com website. If you go to controlaltachieve.com slash pi, P-I, that'll drop you right into the blog post where you'll find um, this video, of course, and the template that you can make a copy of from there. While you're there, definitely check out the rest of the blog posts on the site and the uh, resource tab where I've got all of my Google Apps uh, handouts and slideshows and other resources. And also there's the webinars tab where I put um, about two webinars per month on there on a lot of different Google Apps topics. Feel free to check any of those out. And finally, there is the newsletter tab where you can sign up for a periodic email newsletter with information about the latest stuff um, I'm doing and have on the site. So thanks again so much for watching the video and uh, take care.